All right, getting ready for our final race of the day here for the Motorsport Reunion. It's Group 7B, a 1983 to 2016 Masters Endurance Legends. A little different than the races we've had earlier today because this is going to be a 40-minute race. And I believe there's going to be a mandatory pit stop in the middle of it all. But let's run down the grid as we've got it right now. On the pole, number 42, Bill Oberlin in a 1999 BMW V12 LMR. Alongside in car number 30, Craig Bennett, 2012 Lola V12-80. Spencer Trenery in a 2006 Riley 11 Daytona prototype. Travis Ingen in a 2005 Audi R8 LMP. Third row, Mark Brannon from Paradise Valley, 2001 Riley Scott Mark 3C. Alongside Stephen Zakia in a 2000 Ferrari 550 GT1. Mullen and Crass are scheduled to start the 1999 Panos LMP and Thornton and Hoyt in the 1983 March 83G. David Lockwood drives the 2013 Oreca FLM 09. Then it's John Edwards in a 2001 BMW M3 GTR. Lauren Beggs in a 2004 Porsche 996 RSR. And John McKenna is driving a 2005 Riley D Daytona prototype. 2000 Chevrolet Corvette driven by Rob Morgan. Then it's Tony Garmy completing the role in a 2003 Chevrolet Corvette C5R. Kovacek and Walker in the 2001 Porsche GT3. And John Cavanaugh in a 1996 Ford Mustang. Scooter Gable. Drives a 1997 BMW M3. Christopher Frank alongside 2000 Porsche GT3R. DeFilippi and Plasinski in a BMW M3 GT from 2011. Tom Dooley in a 1982 Mirage M12. Les Whirling, 1991 Chevrolet Camaro. Roberts and Calfo in a 2013 Audi R8 Le Mans Ultra. Hagen and Atkinson in the 2011 Orica FLM09. And Merriman and Tilly in a 1991 NPT90. Our final road, Joyner and Long in a 2000 Lola V2K10 and George Crass in a 2003 Chevrolet. That's your starting field for Group 7B, 1983 to 2016 Masters Endurance Legends as the cars pull onto the track to begin their pace lap. Yeah, so once again, we've got that Bill Oberlin machine, that 1999 BMW V12 Le Mans racer that is up front, Craig Bennett, in that 2012 Lola B1280, that's the LMP2 car that's right behind him. It's going to be an interesting field, especially when you look back. I mean, look at that number 27 car. We saw that in uh, one of the races yesterday. That is actually built in 1982. We just saw a squirrel run across the track. You better get out of the way. But that was actually built in 1982, raced in 1983, and as a result, they were able to run it in this race from 1983. But when you look at the technology difference between a 2012 Lola B1280 and a 1982 Mirage M12, and it's a massive leap in terms of what the car is like. Yeah, it's night and day. What a huge difference. But we got some pretty potent cars up at the front. Bill Oberlin with that V12 BMW. That's a great car and did a great job of driving it yesterday. Craig Bennett in that 2012 Lola is going to be very competitive as well. He's sharing that front row with Oberlin. Arbolin in the 42 car, Bennett in the 30 car. That's that black Lola with the green accent. Really beautiful graphics on that car. In fact, Spencer Trenery is out there. He did have some problems earlier with that 15 2006 Riley 11 Daytona with Travis Engen alongside him in the number two 2005 Audi R8 LMP. And to be eligible for this class, cars have to be raced and have to be entered in the 24 hours of Le Mans in any period or any of its feeder series. Now that's the FIA Sports Car Championship, IMSA, Sports Car World Racing International, Sports Racing Series, a whole series of racing series. So it's a pretty wide net that they cast in terms of the ability to bring cars into this. So Bill Oberlin in that number 42 is going to be exciting to watch as he comes around. A pretty potent two front rows and that great cars are all very fast. Looks like Trenery doing a bunch of tire scrubbing uh, behind the BMW trying to get some heat into that rubber. He's got that number 15 Riley Daytona prototype. 
All right, time for the Masters Endurance Legends. Bill Oberlin is going to bring them around that final turn. It's going to be the BMW V12 LMR and a 2012 Lola V12 right beside him. And Bill Oberlin gets the hammer down right off the bat as soon as he sees the green flag, shoots down into the Andretti hairpin with that Lola right behind him, tucking up underneath, and that Daytona prototype is in third right now. Yeah, and it's uh, the Audi R8 that's running in four spot. Travis Engen in the number two car, just the way they started. Oh, and someone went Bill off. Oberlin, it was Oberlin in the, the BMW, the, the leader. The lead car has gone off the track. BMW V12 Le Mans racer to replay. work his way up. And boy, it looks like he just kind of cooked it in just a little bit too much, which is kind of unusual right there because you're just accelerating, I mean, coming out of that Andretti hairpin, which had a much more sophisticated aerodynamic package, and they're going to try to go after it one another. Boy, Bill Oberlin is working really hard. Coming around that last turn, turn number 11, going onto the front straightaway, lets the rear end kick out just a little bit. Like I say, I think he is seeing red and working hard to catch up to everybody ahead of him. And he's catching up very, very quickly. He's got Spencer Trenery in his sights as Arbelin has caught up to Trenery in that SunTrust Daytona prototype. And now we see back in the pack, there's some battles going on there as well. Remember, this is a full range of cars. We've got all kinds of equipment in this race as we see them going, on, going underneath. That's a Flying Lizard car, Flying Lizard Racing, of course, as he goes down through the corkscrew. Everyone trying really hard to see if they can do their darndest to at least move forward. So we've got that car number 45 being driven by Beggs in 2004 Porsche 996 in the 2003 Corvette by Garmy and Rob Morgan in that 2000 Corvette right behind. But you also see the BMW that's worked his way in there. And that's the BMW M3 from 1997 being driven by Gable. Good battles throughout this field. Bennett has now added a couple of more seconds to his lead. He is now eight and a half seconds ahead of Travis Engen, the second place car. But Bill Oberlin, Oberlin, Oberlin has moved, Trenary. he's moved into third place. He's gotten around the Daytona prototype. Now his job is to reel in that Audi, realizing the Audi's from 2005. It's a slightly more sophisticated car, but I have a feeling that this BMW is uh, with, with Bill Oberlin at the wheel. And remember, Bill Oberlin is a professional race car driver, has been for decades. He's a BMW guy, a great BMW driver. He's won a lot of races, won championships. So he has the skill to manhandle this car and to wring more out of it than probably Engen does. Not to knock Engen, but Bill Oberlin is a professional race car driver. You can see him visibly closing. Oberlin's got a lot more. He makes a bid going down into turn 11. He got around Engen on the outside as he exited turn 10 and has now taken the second spot and is in pursuit of Bennett. Here at Laguna Seca, as he comes up, takes the green flag, Bennett is now powering his way. Bill Oberlin has quickly gotten around the two back markers that were in between. It's just about a two-second lead for Bennett over Oberlin, and Oberlin's goal now is to make sure that he can reel him in. He's going to work really hard. Remember, this is where he went off during that first lap that became a problem for him and moved him back, but he worked hard to get back up into position, and now he just has to figure out how to gain those last two seconds, two and a half seconds, between him and Craig Bennett in that Lola. Boy, he took that BMW right to the edge of the pavement, almost to the dirt over in turn two, using all of the track to get as much speed as he can out of that car. Using all of it, he can see Bennett ahead of him as Bennett crests the hill just out of his sight as they go up through turn six and now up the Ray Hall straight as they head toward the corkscrew and that famous five-story descent down here at Laguna Seca. Bill Oberlin works his line, tries to work the corkscrew the best he can. He's got to figure out how to accelerate it and make it smooth as possible so he can gain as much time as he possibly can on that car. Now, when we look at lap times, so far, Bennett has the fastest lap. He's got a 122.7, where Bill Oberlin, his fastest lap so far, was a 124. So the question is, does Oberlin ultimately have the ultimate speed? It was a two and a half second gap the last time they came around when he went in by the start finish line. Let's see what the gap is this time. It's actually stretched out. It's stretched out to 5.8 seconds. So Bill Oberlin actually lost some time on that lap in terms of, of space between himself and that lead car. And I think it was based on lap times. It wasn't a traffic situation because I don't think either of them encountered any traffic on that last lap. Oberlin's lap time was a 125. 
Oberlin's best lap has only been a 124, so I think that at the end of the day, the Lola is just a better car. Look at BMW in 56 is flashing his lights at the car in front of him. Let him know he's there. Make way. I want to come through. Well, you, you got to earn the position. That number 77 car, I don't think is particularly anxious to uh, to let him go by. That's Mark Brannon in the 2001 Riley Scott Mark 3C. And the BMW weaved out for just a moment as if he was trying to say, hey, I'm back here, I'm back here. But he didn't see any room to go by. Let's see if he can get any advantage. But I think in the corkscrew, this uh, sports racer is going to have an advantage. That 19, the number 77 car is They've got a bit of an advantage as they go through the corkscrew. But look at the BMW trying to come through on the inside. And now the leader has made the pit stop. Craig Bennett has brought that 2012 Lola into the pits. And there, look at that. The BMW has made it past. And guess what? Time for that number 77 to come in and do his pit stop. Very appropriate timing. So once again, Bill Oberlin is now in the lead for this race. However, it's only by virtue of the pit stops, assuming that there's no problem in the pit stop. Because once again, you come in, you make that pit stop, you never know whether something's going to refire properly or there's going to be an issue. But assuming it goes out properly, then Craig Bennett is going to go back out. And then Bill Oberlin is going to be responsible for coming in for his pit stop. So it's an offset. They both have pit stops and their time pit stops. The cars will be stationary for the same amount of time. Just pit in and pit out and get back to it. We won't be able to tell what the gap is going to be between these two until they have both completed their pit stops. But Auburn, in the meantime, has a 36-second lead over the now current second-place car on track, which is the number 56 of Pusinski. That's the 2011 BMW M3 GT. That's the one that was battling with that Daytona prototype sports racer before the uh, Daytona prototype up toward turn six. Great view of all these cars. They come up once again. There's that. There's the flying lizard car. There's the Mirage as it goes down. Goes into the Andretti hairpin. And that is the number 15 car. It's Trenary. And he's about to lap these guys, and I think he's wanted to do it as quickly as possible, so he kind of locked it up just a fraction, but he's still, that's because he's got that number two car that's trying to catch him. So he, I think his goal was to make sure that he got past the back markers so he didn't get held up by him. And now that's exactly what's happened with the number two car. The Mirage pushes him off, didn't see him. The number two car had to go into the inside, got onto the dirt. Fortunately, it didn't look like there was a problem, but I don't think the Mirage ever saw him. I think Engen has made his pit stop. I don't think Trenery has. Well, this late in the race, I have a feeling they've all made their pit stop because it looks like I think if I think if uh, Trenery had not made a pit stop, he'd still have a, he'd, he'd almost be in first place. So I'm going to guess that they've all made their pit stops at this point. That number 50 car, that's actually back at 16th place. He's just a lap back marker. But boy, he's complicating life for that number two car. And that's exactly, exactly what Trenery wanted to have happen. He wanted to get ahead of these guys so that when this guy, the number two car, caught up to them, that they'd have a problem with traffic. Yeah, Engen got bottled up in the corkscrew by those two cars. And that cost him quite a bit of time. He's shown about two seconds behind Trenery. We'll wait for it to update. In the meantime, Bennett continues to pad his lead over Arbolin, the second place car. That's the car we're talking about, the number 45, going back out onto the front straightaway. Currently shown as 11th overall, Lauren Beggs in that car, 2004 Porsche 996 RSR. 15-year-old car, but boy, it sure doesn't look it. You know, you look at that car, mainly because Porsche styling hasn't changed that dramatically, and they've done such a great job of, of, you know, the way they took the work on those cars a long time ago. All right, we understand we've got one lap to go here in the Masters Endurance Series, and Craig Bennett in the 2012 Lola B1280 
has everything in command. What he has to be careful of here is as he goes through these back markers that he doesn't get caught up in any problems. So far, he's been flawless on the day, has not had a single problem. He started in second. Bill Oberlin was in the lead. Bill Oberlin had a problem on that first lap, and then Craig Bennett after that has had no problems. The only time Craig Bennett didn't lead was when he had to come in for his mandatory pit stop, handed the lead briefly over to Bill Oberlin, and then from that point on, he has had no problems whatsoever. His fastest lap on the day, a 121.918. So he is easily the fastest car on the track today. And Bennett on his way to the top of the hill. Once he gets there, he'll begin his descent through the corkscrew, back down to start finish, and a checkered flag. Oberlin's in second right now. Spencer Trenery is the number 15 car, that 2006 Riley Daytona prototype. is likely going to be finishing third, so this is it. As he comes down, he's come down through the corkscrew, he enters turn 11. He's going to power his way up through the start-finish line. The checkered flag is out, and Craig Bennett is going to win the Masters Endurance Legends race here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, part of the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion. Second place, Bill Oberlin. Sure, he would like to have won, but I think at the end of the day, the car just wasn't there. The last turn, get across the finish line, finish third, make sure you've got yourself a podium at this Masters Endurance Legend race here at Laguna Seca. Trenery takes the checker for a third spot in that number 15 SunTrust Daytona prototype. 